this whole debate around cardio, look, I'm going to say it straight up. When it comes to just fat loss and you have your, you have cutting calories, strength training, and cardio at the bottom is cardio. Cardio is not an effective long-term fat loss approach. It is not short term. You'll get some results. Long-term it's terrible. We've talked about this many times, but there's health benefits from it. So we're not anti-cardio. No. We're anti-using it for the wrong reasons. And That's the, all. the people it stirs up the most is the, the guy or the girl who gets up every day and they run for a half hour every hour to start their day, and they've been doing it for five to ten years. I'm not talking to you. Yeah. I'm not talking to you. Keep doing that. If you love to run and it's an, this beautiful escape for you or yeah. like somewhat of a meditation, like I am all for that. That's awesome. I'm talking to someone just like this. I'm, I'm used to being 260 pounds. I, I worked my ass off to get down to 227, and now I'm trying to go from 227 down to 180, which is 40, 40 pounds still. Yeah. I want to lose 40 pounds, mm -hmm. and I'm wanting to get on the, on the treadmill right off. now. Yeah. Terrible fucking idea. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Anabolic, the program that started it all. So if you want to win this program for free, here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And then if we pick your comment, you'll win free access to Maps Anabolic. We also have a sale going on right now. The starter bundle is 50% off. That's Maps Anabolic, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. And then Maps Split. This is an advanced bodybuilder style body part split routine. That's 50% off. So if you're interested, you want to sign up, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for that 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. When all things are considered, generally speaking, free weights are superior to machines. You know, I, I wanted to bring this up because um, there's a couple of articles I've been reading, people are sending me showing studies comparing free weights to machines when it comes to muscle growth. And the studies will show that the, there isn't a difference, that you build the same amount of muscle using a machine as you do using free weights. Um, there's even some studies that show for power output, it's the same, but that's when they use the same exercise. So if you do leg press, you'll see, you know, good power output there. If you do squat, you'll see good power output there. But the thing I think a lot of people miss because we focus so heavily on just muscle development. Well, there's two things. One is free weight exercises mimic real life far better mm -hmm. because if you're going to lift something, if you're going to squat down, if you're going to lift something off the ground or it's rarely on a track or a cable. Yeah. Generally or, you're not supported. Yeah. I'm going to put a box up and, you know, up high or pick up my kids. I mean, it just, it's closer to free weights. Free weights are more like real life. So the carryover, because strength is very specific, right? Um, if you gain strength, most of the strength you gain is in that specific movement. And it's, it's a shorter it's a shorter path from a free weight exercise to real life versus machine to real life. Um, so that that right there is huge, and I think that can't be understated. The other part is a lot of these studies are short, right? Sixteen weeks, uh, you know, maybe at the most, you know, five months. But after training people for years and years and years, I've just consistently across the board seen more consistent gains in strength and muscle and performance with free weights than I have with machines. With machines, I feel like I need more variety, more novelty than I would with uh, with free weights. Yeah, it just seems like you're segmenting the body a lot when you're focused more on uh, machines. And uh, I, I this is where I look at uh, free weights as a lot more specific with with challenging stability and control. And I think that, uh, you know, that all kind of falls into the functional uh, everyday type of movements like you're, you're talking about. And it's just like, it's more beneficial for you to load these type of movements that um, you may find yourself in or, uh, you know, obviously for athletics, uh, you know, that's, that's a big component is getting the whole body to communicate really well together. And once we start segmenting the body up and yes, you can build muscle development in a lot of those different, very specific areas, but do they communicate well with each other? Is it balanced or is it, um, you know, did you just create more imbalances this way by, uh, sort of chopping it up? The irony of this conversation is that the beginner who I think benefits the most from starting in the, the free weight world tends to gravitate towards the machines. Mm -hmm. And the advanced lifter who I think benefits the most from machines uh, is the ones that maybe neglect it. So I think like 
when you've been training for a really long time, uh, there's tremendous value, in my opinion, to utilizing machines because it's different. Yeah. Uh, the strength curve is different. When you uh, are lifting with cables for or a machine, uh, the time under tension and the strength curve is uh, very different than free weights. Yeah. Now, in reality, they would benefit the most from, from sticking well, yeah, to free Well, yeah, you weights. look at a dumbbell, and there's a thousand exercises you can do with that dumbbell, but there's no picture next to it showing you exactly what to do. Or you, if you walk into a gym- yeah. There's a lot more to consider. Yeah, you don't have a lot of exercise experience. I can go up to a machine and go, what is this? And I can look at the picture and kind of figure out where I'm supposed to go, how I'm supposed to sit, what happens with the, with the barbell or a dumbbell. It's like a blank canvas almost. There's no color, you know, by the numbers type of deal. So I can totally get that. Here's the other thing too that a lot of people may not realize. People often refer to machines as being safer. In some cases that's true, but in some cases it's not true. Like if you've ever tried to train someone that's uh, really tall or really short or really overweight, mm. you'll find that machines are inappropriate because machines, even though they have adjustable components, it's still very limited. Whereas free weights follows the person. If you're seven foot tall, an overhead press is the same as if you're five feet tall. You go in a machine, and although you can adjust the arms a little bit, it's still very limited. Um, and and you, some machines are just inappropriate. I mean, Adam, you're you're six three, so you're tall, but you're not like so tall that it's crazy. I bet you there's certain machines that just didn't work for you because um, most machines I had I would have to like slide my hips back on on it and or like angle different to actually get the feel. Now luckily I understand biomechanics and I know what I'm trying to accomplish by that machine so I can wedge my body in yeah. or slide around to get the a perfect angle but yet most machines I, I don't actually fit in well and I'm only, I'm like I said I'm 6'3 I'm not like abnormally tall so yes. if you're 6'5 six, 6'6 six, six, stuff machines I mean they, it's I think it's like made for the average male at 5'10 or something like five, that 5'9 is that what it is yeah 5'9 wow. male that's average yeah that, okay. that in the US it is this is where most of these machines are are, are made so it's 5'9 and then they'll have you can adjust up and down so you'll get a few inches up or down but I, I mean, it's true. I'll, I remember having clients, I'll get them on a machine. Even if I do the adjustments, I'm like, this doesn't line up well. Mm -hmm. You know, that your elbow has to lift up for you to perform this particular exercise. Whereas with free weights, of course, so long as the weight is appropriate, I could apply that to anybody. Like it doesn't matter well, how tall or short there's you also are. The, there's also the, um, how quickly the body adapts to uh, the machine versus free weights, right? So one of the other perks for training a new client on free weights is the learning curve, the skill acquisition of using free weights is longer mm. than sitting in a machine. So the body is going to adapt to that preacher curl on a machine or that pec deck much faster than they are going to do a standing bicep curl or a dumbbell chest fly. Mm -hmm. So you reap more benefits from the free weights because it's challenging. But I get why they, I mean, because one of the things we have to remember, try and remind ourselves is that you know, we uh, either had athletic backgrounds or in your case, you've been lifting since you were, you know, 14 years old or whatever. But people that have no experience, no athletic background, um, you know, lifting weights is really challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and can be very intimidating. Skill. Yeah. And so it's easy to avoid it and go do something where you can just sh sit in a machine, but you're really missing out on so much more if, if uh, by avoiding them. Yeah. Well, and the other part too is I think when people are very absolute, I think then your, their arguments start to get kind of picked apart. Like, I don't think every free weight exercise is superior to every machine counterpart. Like, a cable fly is superior to a dumbbell fly, in my opinion, uh, because the tension mm -hmm. is consistent throughout. Whereas with a, with a dumbbell fly, it's heavy at the bottom, and then when I come up to the top, there's no tension. How, so that's just one example. However, however, the best free weight exercises are better than the best machine exercises. So when we're talking about a you know a barbell squat, barbell squat generally is better than the best leg machine that you can find for overall. For I mean, and again, we're not just saying just for quad growth. I hate it when bodybuilders argue that crap. Like, oh, quad growth is okay, fine. You're a bodybuilder. You want to just sculpt your body, and you don't really care about this kind of stuff. I get it. But if you're we're looking at everything, muscle growth, fat loss, mobility, function, carryover, all that stuff. A barbell squat generally is better than any leg machine. A barbell deadlift. Uh, I don't think there's a machine that even mimics a barbell deadlift, right? An overhead press. Well, you can make the argument that some machine overhead presses are pretty damn good.
but I would argue that a standing overhead press just is far more functional and just mimics real life more. So there's definitely machines that are better than their free weight counterparts, but when it comes to the best exercises, uh, free weights are just the best. And, you know, again, especially if you do this long enough, you just see this. You just mm -hmm. see this. And look, even with rehab, if you look at what physical therapists use in rehab, they use either free weights or devices that are more like free weights than machines. So they'll use things like bands uh, or, you know, elastic material, right? That's more like a free weight than, than a machine because it can go anywhere. They use some machines, but not much. In fact, um, you know, we work with a company called Luna and through their own study, they saw, they found that over 90% of rehab can be done at home with basic pair of dumbbells that they'll bring and some resistance bands. They don't have these big machines that they need to use all the time. If you've ever been to a physical therapy clinic, you'll know this, you'll see that. So it's just overall, they're superior. And it's just, I think it's a silly debate. And again, I hear the bodybuilder crowd sometimes, and there's some real funny people with that. You could develop just as big a legs with a leg press as you can with the squat. All right, even if that was true, and you can build the exact same muscle with a leg press and a squat, which one in the real world is going to make you more functional, have more carryover, and improve your quality of life better? But generally speaking, it's going to be the squat. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's never really an, uh, you know this or that. Like, it's not an either or. It's, right. it's a combo of both. Uh, and because of the value of, of free weight training, it's just something that I don't stray away from for too long. Like, I like machines for a novel stimulus, yeah. and, I, and it's definitely something that will provide your – your muscles like a whole new like response. Um, but in terms of the adaptation, like it, it is pretty quickly adapted to, to that fixed position. Uh, so I still like to combo the both. So I maximize, you know, my efforts in terms of like hypertrophy training specifically. So I'm still getting the strength, but also now I can add volume pretty easily with machines. Yeah, so yeah. to address your point about the, the bodybuilding community, there's, uh, and it's been happening for a while now. There's this, um, you know, movement around the muscle activation studies on all these machines. And I think that uh, it, it, it's unfortunate because it doesn't tell the full story. No, it doesn't encapsulate everything. Yeah, it's but one thing. That's the argument that a lot of them will use is, oh, have you seen the muscle activation studies <laughs> on this machine versus a barbell back squat? And yeah. they'll show you that like a hack squat will activate more quad muscle than the, you know, barbell back squat. Therefore, they think, and from a bodybuilder perspective, well, I'm trying to train and activate that muscle more than anything else. Therefore, mm -hmm. it it's better for building muscle, and it's not true. And it's an argument that you see circulating the bodybuilding community and all over social media all the time. Yeah, and I've heard, I've even heard um, them make the argument that, like, I, because there's studies that will show that an isolation exercise will build as much muscle in a targeted muscle as a compound exercise. So, like. A leg extension will build as much quad muscle as a squat. This is the argument that I'll hear. And there's these short studies that may show it. And you got to look at the, obviously the subjects and all that stuff. But I'm like, man, you know, sometimes what we do, you know, what it, Max Lugavier said something really good in a past podcast. He said, be, si be evidence, what was it? Evidence-based, but not evidence-bound. Evidence-based, not evidence-bound, mm -hmm. right? So like, could you really, do you really think you could go to any strength coach and say to them, hey, uh, if I compared an athlete who just did squats to an athlete that did leg extensions, leg curls, abductor uh, machine, and adductor machine, which one's going to build more muscle? Because leg extension, leg curl, abductor, adductor technically will hit all the muscles, you know, than, than a, a squat will. Oh, throw in a, maybe a, a glute kickback or something like that. It'll activate all the same muscles. But is any strength co coach really going to be like, yeah, you'll build as much strength as muscle? No. Every yeah. strength coach to be like, nah, it's not going to be the same thing. It's just not going to work as well. I mean, the fact that this is even an argument is 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 actually a really good thing because it, it what it is, and to Justin's point, is um, it should never be exclusively one or the other. It's like this just shows that there's tremendous value in both the fact that people will actually argue yeah. that one is a better. What What's better than one or the other is both. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Nothing. Depending on what you need and, and you know, you pick the right tool. Yeah. And or what you've been doing for so long. Like imagine if you were the freeway guy all the time. That's what I'm doing right now. Yep. I, I've been doing lots of machines lately just to give my body a, a yeah. change because and, I've always done a tremendous things. value in that. Mm -hmm. now, and then the reverse is true. If you were this guy that all you did was machines yeah. all the time, like imagine moving over into free weight. So 
they 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 have they both have tremendous value and the truth is instead of you know and because this is the problem with our space is we get into these camps all the mm-hmm. time and it's like this is better than that and then the average person they identify with one or the other more or they're they feel more comfortable with one or the other more, and then they and then they stick in that and the truth is like man it, forget all that noise about which is better it's like they're both tremendous and have value learn how to weave in and out of both yeah totally. speaking of two things with tremendous value uh i actually have been getting quite a few dms lately from athletes um that wanted to kind of express uh, an actual combo that they've been using for performance for their games or, you know, for competing. And they've been using the Organifi Red Juice in combination with Pure, which oh, yeah. I thought was I've brilliant. Oh, you have? I've done that before, Pure and Red Juice. Oh, I haven't done I haven't that, done that, that yet. That is a nice I, jam. I was like, duh, that makes so much sense because now you got all the stamina, endurance, you know, provided from the Red Juice and in combination with that clear focus yeah, two as of the you're key, training. Two of the key ingredients in the Red Juice are cordyceps, and uh, rhodiola, both proven to improve stamina and endurance. And uh, I was um, inspired to try the red juice again because of how you said it helped you with your caffeine yeah. withdrawal. And it works. It definitely helps. The, what, the issue I had with rhodiola before was the dose. Hmm. So I'm realizing I need a lower dose. I was going too high, just like caffeine, right? Like yeah. there's a dose that makes you feel good. Too much oh. makes you feel like crap. I, I'm sensitive to, to rhodiola. And the red juice has the right dose. In the past, I've taken rhodiola, rhodiola like capsules by itself, taking too much, and I get this weird like so I don't, like sleepy. Yeah, sleepy. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm in a in like a like a sauna almost, like dark cloud or whatever. Yeah, the red juice with pure, excellent. I want to try that now. Somewhat stimulant know, right? free. I say somewhat stimulant free because rhodiola has a bit of a, a stimulant effect. By the way. You would like this, Justin. I know you're into Soviet studies. Mm-hmm. You got to read the Soviet studies on rhodiola. Oh, that, yeah. They were big on using rhodiola for strength, stamina, recovery. Hmm. I mean, it's one of the it's one of the proven herbal supplements that actually improves like across the board. In it's cool performance. when you can find that, you know, from herbal sources, right? And it's not like some crazy, yeah. you know, drug compound. Yeah, dude. Speaking of uh, of sauna, I got to tell you guys, hilarious. Well, it's kind of funny, but it also kind of paints how the average person views strength training. So uh, every day I work out before we come here. And then I have, if I have time, I'll do the sauna. If I don't have time, I'll do the steam room because it's much faster. Well, today I had time. So I went in the steam room. I'm sorry, sauna. And I'm sitting there. And this is it's cool because that's why I get to reflect on things and kind of set myself up with some gratitude. Can't take my phone in there. So I'm just chilling. Well, this guy comes in. Older guy. I want to say he's probably maybe a little older than me. And he sits down and then he like strikes up a conversation, which is cool, you know. So we start talking. He goes, Hey man, he goes, You you got a great physique. Oh, thanks. I, I, you know, I appreciate <laughs> Is it. Is it like being naked in a sauna having a guy called Pajuli? <laughs> I know. Well, he said it in a very, you know, I, I didn't feel I, I felt like he was being genuine or whatever. So, so I'm like, seriously, you might have a touch you know, yeah. arm or something. Yeah, he's like, Your glutes look now. He said, You ever really you, you got a, you know, you, you got a great physique, man. You've been working out for a while. I'm like, Yeah. And he's like, How long have you been working out? So we're kind of talking, and he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, I never really got into strength training. And I'm like, oh, yeah? And he goes, yeah, I do, you know, rowing and cycling. And so why, how come you've never done strength training? It's so valuable. I said, I wrote a book on it. And he goes, well, I'm just, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't want to get too big. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what inspired that tweet you did the other day? Yes. Oh, that's what inspired yeah. so, that well, tweet. Well, no, I did the tweet first. Oh, that's the, Yeah, ironic. this happened today. That's ironic. I know. You did that tweet that's and then so that funny. just happened. Yeah, so he's like, I don't want to get- Come from a guy. Too. He's like, I don't want to get too often. big. And yeah. I said, listen, I said, you won't. Don't worry. <laughs> you it's won't, not, dude. Actually, it's not going to happen, I, You know what? Actually, yeah. though, Justin, I mean, what you're saying, though, Sal, is, is it's actually more common than uh, we actually talk about. We always we always uh, pick on girls for saying that. Some guy, yeah. guys will of, say that, too. A lot of guys would say that. I know they a lot don't of want to get too big. Yes, I know a lot of guys. A, a, a lot of guys that are cyclers, rowers, yes. and and they kind of gravitate uh, towards yeah. those things that they they know that has a, a strength component to it, right? To yeah. cycle, you got to have strong legs. To yeah. row, you got to have want strong. That, that weight to strength ratio to be nice and tight. And, and yeah. you know what's even funny about that you, is, is 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 I've talked to people like that. I don't want to get too big. And oh, by the way, the tweet that I that I put it was something like people who don't lift weights because they're afraid of looking like a bodybuilder. It's like being afraid of working hard because you're going to become a billionaire. Like it's the same <laughs> yeah. thing. It's like, right. So anyway, I've actually talked to people and they'll be like, and then they'll do this thing, right? Well, no, no, you don't understand. Like I, I like my legs just totally, be, like all my shoulders just get so. <laughs> like it gets monstrous. Like I do anything and they just grow. I'm just like, uh, I try not to roll my eyes, you know? Yeah. So he said that too. He's like, I don't want to get too big. And I said, I said, you're, you're, you won't. Yeah. 
And he goes, no, I build, I build muscle really easy. I said, you don't. I don't look at fitness. Like, <laughs> I said, you don't. You don't build muscle that easily. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I, just, I said, listen. And so I explained. I did my whole talk, you know, like, you know, like the spectrum of muscle building genetics. I said, unless you're like a seven foot tall person in terms of muscle building genes. And I said, and, and no offense. I said, you obviously you work out, but I'm looking at you. You don't have those <laughs> genes. <bro." laughs> <laughs> you just complimented me. I'm a yeah. shit on you. No, and I said, yeah. I don't either. And I told him, I said, I don't either. I yeah. said, I don't have those genes either. I yeah. said, I've been working out. Like, this took 30 years, bro, <laughs> bro. <laughs> just to get here. Bro, I didn't just happen overnight. I've been lifting dude. weights consistently to, 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 hard trying to get too yeah. big and it doesn't yeah. work. You should have came back and been like, I know. That's why I don't do the row or anything. I would just dominate like immediately. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird you said that. I just started lifting weights yesterday. Just, yeah. Can you tell? I could just get up and do a marathon. No Almost problem. too big already. Ah. You know? No, it's true though. But there, there's, uh, there's, uh, I wouldn't say an equal amount, but there's quite a few guys I remember too that would get, and I, I find that actually uh, more popular today than now. I don't know what it, I don't know if it's the generation coming up the that like uh, millennials. We need were, more Arnold films. You know what I mean? That's what's that's the difference. It's, right it there. was weird to me as an early trainer because all I wanted to do was look like Arnold. Yeah. So I remember guys saying that. Those like, are the example we grew up with. Yeah. You know, all those movies, action movies, like the, you saw this with action movie stars. Like they just got smaller and smaller and smaller. They did, and it's like what we have left is like. I guess we have Marvel characters, like some superhero, but they're just kind of well, cut. Didn't, didn't one of the, what was it, the most recent Spider-Man or Batman, like, refuse to lift weights to get for, ready for the role? No way. Are yeah, yeah. No, said, no, no, I thought, what's his that name? Check, no, Is the that news, the glitter vampire The guy? last Batman. Whoever, no, I thought who, he did lift no, weights. No, read it. Look up, look up. See, yeah, am I right? Thank what you. What did he say, Andrew? Boom. <laughs> Wait, show, pull it up. I want to see what right? he refused. He refused to lift weights for Rob the role. Patterson or whatever. Yes. What's his name? Something like that. Yeah. Look, you up, know what, look up the most recent Batman. Whoever. I don't know who the main I still guy haven't is. haven't seen the movie yet. But man. I did. I, Pat Pattinson. Okay. Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Am I, Robert there's Pattinson. an article. I came across it. You like, know what he's going to say? I don't want to lift weights. So I did a bunch of like body weight. You know, it's still strength yeah. training. What's it say, Doug? Yeah. He says he refuses to work out con constantly for Batman role because he doesn't want to set a precedent. Oh. What are you talking about? It's Batman. In other <laughs> words, if he wants to do a sequel, maybe he doesn't want to have to be Jack for it. I don't you know. know. What? A president like that or that that this is what people should look like. Oh, that could be that too. You know what's know. funny though? Can I say something? Because that's why I think it's- Have it's you guys seen the last Jackman, movie, dude? It's more like popular the last now, one dude. that like put the effort in. Have you seen uh, the last Batman? Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen so, it? What's I, it? Let me hear it, Doug. Yeah, so this is what he said. I think if you're working out all the time, you're part of the problem, he See? Wow. Referring to his fellow Hollywood actors. You're a fucking superhero, dude. He like, <laughs> you set a precedent, he added. <laughs> no one was doing this in the 1970s, even James Dean. He wasn't exactly ripped. Well, James Dean wasn't playing Batman either. And, and wait, hold on, hold on. People were way more active anyway. What does he mean if you're not working out all the time? What a moron. Isn't that funny? I don't want to sounds, sounds lazy to Isn't me. Isn't that funny? Anyway, well, look. But that's all part of this issue that we're talking about. There's like this movement that Well, so, okay, so two things. Yeah. I watched the Batman. I don't know if you guys watched it. You guys I, watched it? I haven't I watched it I started it. Okay. I heard like split in the middle. Like, okay, people so loved it, people hated it. It's way more realistic than other Batmans. And what I mean by that, remember the last Joker with what's his name? Joaquin yeah. Phoenix? Remember how that was kind of like they super creepy, but it was but also good. it was also somewhat realistic. Like, oh, he's actually crazy. Yeah, he's and, really mentally ill. Yes. So this Batman is somewhat realistic. He's still a billionaire. He still is like this really good detective, but he doesn't have like this crazy tech that would never. You know, how Batman's got like like where did he get that jet plane <laughs> that it's got he's just got the grappling gun. <laughs> no, he, this is like an actual. When you watch it, it's like he's an actual billionaire who's a really good detective. He gets his ass kicked. The Batmobile looks like a souped up muscle car. Doesn't Wait. look like this crazy like Batman Okay, so what okay, what are your thoughts on that then? So him not looking super jacked actually worked because when you watch Well, it, it works for the role, but what do you guys think about that? Stupid. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's he's weak. A, it's yeah. a, he's a superhero. Yeah. yeah, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. no, dude. It's, it's, it's not supposed, supposed to be, be the example. It's not supposed to be obtainable. It depends on the no. superhero. Not, I didn't I never watched, you know, Superman or Batman as yeah. a kid Don't and been like I'm so going to be You're not going to put in the work. If you're Plastic Man or The Flash, yeah, you're not supposed to be big. That's your role. Right, but yeah. if you're Batman, Batman's jacked. Yeah, in the comic books. I mean, come on, he doesn't even have his superpowers. At least have some muscle. Yeah, Spider Man, you can be tiny and a little yeah. kid or whatever. No, it's ridiculous. Not no, Batman. Ah, uh, cracks me up. No, you know what's funny? I had this conversation with someone a while ago. I remember him him going. This guy said, "You know, I don't want to get too big, type of deal." And then he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I'd rather look like a." He goes, "I don't want to look like like Arnold." He goes, "I'd rather look like Van Damme." <laughs> and I remember I told him, "I said what?" I said, "Hold on." I said, what? 
<laughs> you know how much Van Dam had to work out? I'm like, bro, like, yeah, exactly. Dude, I said, insane. if you worked out for years and had the perfect diet and everything, you probably still wouldn't look like Van Dam. Just so you know, dude, how hard that would be. You know? <sighs> this is like the same struggle. I told you guys, like, when I'm trying to like motivate these like high school kids to like put on size because they're getting pushed around, you know, mm. and they just don't get it. Like, they're just thinking like getting cut and and all this, so they're on the beach. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I remember being high, that's Ooh, as a high school kid, cares. abs were everything, bro. Yeah. Like when you're in high school, yeah, but you, know, you can't build very much. Not when you're music. playing a sport where you're gonna get punked and look like a little bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like come on, dude, like get big. I didn't want abs when I was in high school because I was insecure about being skinny. I, well, didn't care yeah. I had them naturally. Ironically, I had them the best when I was like working out, uh, you know, for gaining size. No. And it, but then again, I was that young. Yeah. And so it was. Listen, even if you had like the most crazy, rare muscle building genetics, you will not work out once and then wake up the next day and be like, oh no. Not only, not only what that, have I done? like quickly a, a three month stint of becoming, you know, cycle rowing swimming guy will take care of that real fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like, muscle is so easy to keep either it's and hard as shit to get build listen, and then it's not it's, i mean i know we talk about the studies of how much how little volume you need to do to maintain it but that's after years of years of building yeah. i to look a certain point. i worked i would love your guys's uh like stories on this too i i worked in gyms for a long i mean since i was 18 so i've been working in gyms forever ever ever and there's already a bias people who work in gyms are you often there's somewhat of a genetic component maybe they were athletes they've been working out for a long time gym people that go to gyms are consistent working out in my entire life working in gyms, I can honestly say I have really worked with maybe two people that fall into that category where you're just like, wow, yeah. that dude has got some insane gen I had one guy who I've talked about him before. He was a porter. So he cleaned the bathrooms and, you know, cleaned the gym. And he ate a McDonald's bacon, egg, egg and cheese biscuit for breakfast. He'd have a Pop-Tart for lunch. He'd have like a Top Ramen for, like he barely ate anything. It was like he'd, Jerry, dude. He'd yeah. go do Skull Crushers with 225. Yeah. And yeah. just Jack still. Yeah. It didn't matter. Like I remember him. And then there was, um, God, did you guys know Bobby? He was a, a Persian dude, oh, top the, sales guy. Yeah, yeah. You ever seen that J guy? Jason's buddy. You ever seen him like just like just squat? I've never seen him lift, no. Oh, I mean, now he was, he, you could tell. You look at him and you're in, you look, you're like, man, he could be a strong I, I trained this guy. I wish I remember his name. Um, he was like 55, 57 years old, um, uh, older black guy, probably 6'3", six, 6'2", six, somewhere around that range, probably 250-ish or like that. This dude was, and like never lifted weights. And I'll never forget like the first day we lifted together and I had to put like 315 on the bar. No. Yes. He dude. was your client? Yes. <laughs> and I remember doing the row with him and he was so like, he was just naturally. Yeah, use all your strength, bro. To, to, to try and get him to retract, I had to stick my knee in his back and take <laughs> everything I had to like pull his shoulder blades back because he was just Ugh. like so jacked, dude. I mean, I'll, it was the first time training, I'm there, and I remember like, I mean, you you take a client, I don't, even a, a, a male big client who's hasn't lifted weights, and I go do a bench press. I'm all, I'm not even starting with forty fives. I'm probably putting like twenty fives yeah, yeah. on there, and I remember that. I remember like starting off to okay forty fives, okay two twenty five, okay like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, all yeah, right, dude, more. just freaking that's so wild. You guys ever, strong. You guys worked at Santa Teresa. There was a Samoan dude that used to come in, older guy. You ever seen that guy work out? He'd throw like five plates on the bar and just. Well, when we worked at Santa Teresa, that was when uh, Isaac Sapuaga yeah. uh, used to work out there. So Is that he was, the guy that I used to see? He used to yeah, play like for the night. Plates, he used to play for the night. Them. I got great stories about him and his wife. So he came in one time. This is before I knew who he was. It must have been him then. Samoan dude. Yes. Yeah, yeah dude. I remember Bro, he watching picked, him. He picked up. I'll never forget this. We Bro, both happened to do the same basketball. exercise. We're in the freeways. I don't know who he is yet at this time. I just know he's this big Samoan dude. And I'm doing dumbbell skull crushers. And I'm pretty strong at this time. So I'm doing like 40-pound dumbbell skull crushers. He walks over. And he grabs the 80s and he starts doing dumbbell skull crushers for reps, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 like a little baby. <laughs> yes, dude. I'm over here with the 40s. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, shaking. Uh, demoralizing. Yeah, right. And, and feeling strong, you know, yeah. 40s. You know, not bad for dumbbell yeah. skull crushers. Grabs the 80s. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. I just yes. take him and like hand him to him. Be like, so right, I trained, done. I trained his wife. Um, also, so I, later on, I found out who he was. We, I've told stories before yeah. playing with the 49ers in, in the basketball court. And so that he, super nice guy, I ended up training his wife. This is the first and only time I've ever been like so off 
on the scale with, especially with a woman, like putting her weight on oh. there. Like, so as a trainer, really young, you learn really quick. Like you don't want to offend a client. So you always like start kind of like, yeah, real low. If I like, if I look at someone, I'm pretty yeah, good. Like, I, oh, you're 150. I'm yeah, start yeah. At 140, That's right. I mean, you know, yeah. I can get within like five or ten pounds of almost. That's anybody so funny. Looking, it's so true. Right. Yeah. At least my, because you probably made a mistake at one point when you were young, when you were 20. You know what I'm saying so. Never get. You don't it. want to go backwards. I go 300. Right. And I work my way back. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yes, that's not what you want to Put do. Put your foot on the scale. Like right. You. Right. So oh, no. Holy okay. cow. So and I'm I I think you know up until this point I'm rarely ever off five or 10 pounds. So I, I normally will hit someone, but I'll start a little light and I'm like, okay, I'm right where I'm at. So anyways, I get her now, uh, Samoan girl, right? Flat stomach. And she's like, I don't know, probably five, three, five, four ish range or so. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, okay, she's pretty solid looking. So, you know, maybe she's, you know, she's only five, three, five, she's lean. Right. And she, and she's got a flat stomach. She's lean. So maybe she's one thirty five, one forty. So I'm going to start at like one twenty five. I go like one, like pend. Yeah. I go 10 <laughs> pend like, like oh. one forty pend one fit. Like the thing's not moving. And I'm like, bro, she was 200 pounds. Whoa. Dude, but what? all lean, muscle. lean, yeah. dude. Like literally like 13, yeah, 14 bro, percent body crazy. fat. What do their kids look like? Oh, I know, the dude. I mean, I haven't seen them in forever. They were really little when I was training her and he was coming around. Bro, genetics are weird, man. They're yeah. such a Imagine wide... the, like that's the two had a baby, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. So I would love to see what I had the, the kids are now. I had an experience uh, like that once when I, I I did a little bit of Muay Thai just when I was trying to supplement jujitsu well, or whatever. Tell me that. Yeah, just a little bit. And like literally like months. It was like maybe five months. Like in this living room? No, no. This was at this <laughs> like was actually, like Napoleon Dynamite. Rex Pondo. Yeah. 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 yeah dude. <laughs> I want you to kick me. Come on, kick me. Okay, do it again. Do it again. Ouch. Okay. You'll block it every time. That's for Starla. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I used to kick a banana tree until it cracked in half. Show me the video, all, dude. All those banana no, trees I, in San Jose. Yeah, I, used to, I used to spar. I've seen those videos. We would dip our hands in glass just so we'd hit each other. <laughs> Rex Quando. All, right. all right, Rex Quando. I didn't realize you're so hardcore. Regular, regular stuff. You know what I mean? Regular stuff. No, oh, no, no. It was, like, it, was like, it was like five months, and I would go like a couple days a week. When was this girl there? She was a pro kickboxer. And she was probably, I don't know, 140 pounds, so like average size, but she's obviously a pro. And she was teaching me how to kick really well, right? And, we, you know, we, we were kicking the bag and then we were holding the, you know, the pad or whatever. There's a particular way that you hold a, a pad uh -huh. to practice leg kicks or whatever. So I held it and she uh -huh. kicked it real easy, just kind of showing me the technique. And then she goes, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little yeah. hard. Yeah. So she's like, I'll light you up. <laughs> bro. She's like, I'm going to go a little hard. Bro. She said, is that okay? I said, yeah. I said, and I kind of laughed a little bit. And I said, you're probably going to hit a lot harder than I think, aren't you? And she goes, well, I mean, she goes, I have good technique. She goes, just get ready. So I'm going to kind of yeah. show you what it feels like, bro. Did she knock you over? This one hundred, she she knocked my feet out from under me. Yeah, good douche. And I got and I I'm like, wow. I had I told a similar her, experience. I with said that. you could kill me if you hit me in the face. With that. <laughs> it's so insane, like the kind of force you can generate with a kick versus a punch. Oh, you know, there's hard. There's people that can generate some serious like punching power, but it's I it like leg kick shit on that. It's, yeah. Oh man, did like, you guys see the Chandler Ferguson leg kick? No. Oh yeah, that just happened that last was, UFC. No, that that was was oh, is it a leg snap? Bro, Joe, like that. Joe Rogan His face like deformed. Joe Rogan came in and said that was the the nastiest. Leg oh, kick oh, 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 when he kicked him in the face. Yeah. Oh, I saw that front kick right. That to was just a regular jump. front kick too. Oh, oh, front kick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but he had like a full on like it was. It was a nice snap and everything. Oh, I saw it was that. a beautiful snap. They full. caught someone caught a picture of the foot connecting, and, and you the see, face was like. Well, because your face, you know, the the, the uh, momentum, the ripple of the yeah, the force. Transfer. You know, what it reminds me of. You ever seen videos of people in um those those G machines or in a jet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You like ever seen their faces like? Yeah. <laughs> look like the, they look like they're <laughs> melting in the, in the thing. Yeah, he, he was out cold for a hot minute. Dude. That's yeah. scary. Yeah. Dude. You know when the, it, it, yeah, it's scary when uh, it goes because obviously the initial reaction of the crowd is always crazy. Ah, yeah. Right, and then yeah, that, but then you're like, oh up. my god! And then they okay? then they don't yeah. move for like a minute or two, and then like the whole arena goes silent and stuff like that. He was down for a while. I watched. There used to be the show on Discovery. We were talking about it the other day, where they would uh, this guy would go and and he would explore martial arts around the world, like yeah, where they came from, the origin of each one. Yeah, and then yeah, they would well, talk I about the, that. Then they would mm -hmm. talk about the physics yeah, yeah. of what's happening. I love that show. They'd compare a Taekwondo kick to a Muay Thai <laughs> kick to a whatever kick. 
And then I think it was on that show where they talked about what happens to the brain when you get knocked out. Mm. And basically it's the two hemispheres twisting. Twisting, yeah. And then it's like a, it's like a like a reset. Right. Like it's the twisting action of the of oh, both hemispheres. Twisting. I thought it was a the the uh the kind of like the bouncing. That's thing. when you get a concussion, that'll yeah. do it too. Oh, yeah, okay. But the two hemispheres the, doing this. Yeah, it's the twist that really just it lights <clears throat> lights out. Yeah, oh, and then wow. you go and then you just go to sleep. Yeah. So of course something like that that Right, cracks someone. It is like here the where it, like it it'll twist it a bit more yeah. Yeah, effectively. Dude. He went to sleep. But yeah, those yeah. those Muay Thai guys. You ever seen? You ever watch? I talked about the banana tree, right? But that's not a joke. You ever seen those guys <coughs> oh, kick no, banana I, trees down? That's why I laughed because like I've seen those videos when I was like just <laughs> fucking around with Muay Thai for like a, 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 I think it was like two years on and off. But it was just like I. I would just watch those videos, be like, "Holy shit, these guys oh. like conditioning their well, they call it like conditioning their shins." Yes, but it's like, I mean, little micro fractures are continuously so, like providing their their shins. Their so legs. my buddy, who was the one who would teach me um, sometimes Muay Thai, he he had a stick, and what you do is you lay your, you put your leg out like this, mm -hmm. and you go up and down your shins You're with like the stick it to get it to adapt to get what? like basically kill the the feeling. You know how painful that <laughs> yeah, you is? you kill like the nerve uh, response to that. And then also like you build, I'm sure there's scar tissue like, you know, the, uh, that goes with that. Yeah. In that same show, they showed how, uh, I think they analyzed the shins of these Muay Thai fighters and found that. So, you know, when you, you break a bone, when it grows back at the break, it's stronger than before. Mm -hmm. So when you look inside of a bone, it looks like, like you see some space in between like the, it's not like a honeycomb, but basically so there's spongy yes yeah exactly yeah. <clears throat> and and what they said is there's lots of micro fractures from kicking hard things or mm -hmm. whatever and every time the micro fractures heal it fills in those gaps so they develop these dense yeah strong bones to be able to do what they it's do. like what we used to do with uh marijuana plants what? Used, yeah, used to you kick used, one down? No, no, no. You used to. <laughs> it's uh, that's easy. <laughs> it's called low level stress training, and you you wow, take really you, yeah you take the you take the stems of them and you like you you just twist them and you hear them, and you you're basically doing these little micro breaks to make it stronger. To, yeah, and then what happens is it strengthens and then it gets like a a a, a bigger. Um, What's the word? Stock. Of stock. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, it gets a bigger stock, which then produces a bigger, Man, you stronger. Really plant. did get to that like super nerd. Oh, level dude, I home. so did. Yeah, no, I was. I mean, when I was in it, just like we are with everything else. I mean, this is one of the things that we're all very we have in common is like when we obsessive. Become, yeah, yeah, when we get mm -hmm. obsessed about something, we go crazy, go deep into it, and you know, <clears throat> once I once I started, like I just I went down the rabbit hole of learning mm -hmm. all that stuff. So wow, yeah, was, that's crazy. Yeah, interesting. Hey, I, I want to give a friend of mine a shout out because um, do you guys have anybody in your? Well, I mean, I'm sure your spouses are like this, but um, someone who's not you don't necessarily expect this from. Do you have anyone in your life you don't expect this from, who's like a, just very supportive from day one when you do something or? So I have a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Angela. I met her through uh, my cousin's wife. And we've been friends for a long time. When I first created Maps, she was one of the first people to try it and do it. When Mind Pump first came out, she would listen to every episode and comment on it. And I haven't talked to her in a long time. You know, we're friends and everything, but she's you know, one of those friends you don't talk to in a while. But then when you see him, it's like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. Her husband's a great guy, too. They have two kids, gorgeous. She just sent me a message. She's like, hey, I just saw your interview on impact theory, man, I love I'm just following you guys and your growth and whatever. And it's, it's so nice, you know? Yeah. So it's, since day one... She's been so supportive, and it's really, really cool, um, you know, to have people like that. In your you life. know, what's funny about that is like I've I've found it's it's friends that I'm kind of loose friends with that are the most supportive. You know, it's not like my my immediate friends or family. It's, I wonder why that is. You think it's just like know. competitive, maybe? Well, yeah, it depends on how maybe. you built the relationship. I actually think this is like a um, I don't think it's a secret, but it's like a hack to uh, getting successful faster, you know, and I think a lot of people get stuck, right? They get stuck in these relationships that they built when they were much younger and had a lot more insecurities and they don't realize these bonds that they built with people were for things that probably aren't helping you grow and mm -hmm. holding you back and they're not very supportive and you can get really stuck and held back <clears throat> and learning to prune those type of people out of your life and surround yourself with more people 
uh, that are supportive and are uh, you know happy for your success and and sad for your failures. You know, that's right. Yes, and, and genuinely, not fake. Not the opposite. Yeah, not pretending like yeah. they. they like you are. ever have a failure and you yeah. get that one friend that's like, well, you know, I, I told you, man. It's, you yeah. know, you're like, what the hell? Bro? Could have told you that was coming. Yeah, yeah, but I I do think that. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm such a believer in that. You know, you're an average of your five friends that you spend the most time with, and you know mm -hmm. that was something that I started to piece together in, later in my twenties. And I really did watch my growth accelerate when I started to do that, when I started to, and I also started to see, uh, you know, the drama and stuff that would be around in my life in my twenties, like it started to disappear because those type of people also attract that. Totally. Those, those people that are negative or they, they don't, they're competitive with you or they don't want to see totally. you successful. They also attract a lot of bad energy like that. Mm -hmm. And if you have relationships with people, it's hard. For, somehow you get sucked into it all the time. I noticed when I started to, to, wean all those people out of my life, um, I no longer started to see that drama. And then I also started to see growth accelerate. And so, and it's hard. It's hard when you're, uh, you know, 20 something well, years old and you made, you know, these, these like high school or college friends. Well, it's because you, you feel like you're betraying your old <laughs> connection to them, but you're not, mm -hmm. you still value that. Sure. You know, so I, I get it. I have, I have friends like that where you just don't talk to them anymore, but that doesn't mean you don't value what you had before and it, it make you feel like you're not loyal is what, what I, that's what I'll struggle with. Like, am, I, am I not being loyal to my friend because we're so different now? We don't hang out and should I, but hundred percent, you got to prune them off. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Did you guys see what Netflix uh, sent their employees? No, uh -uh. bro. The market is, I mean, look, these are companies at the end of the day. So market <clears throat> speaks, policies change. So Netflix mm. sends out a memo to the employees and basically says, Hey, here's a deal. We, we put a variety of content on our platform and we leave it up to the consumer to decide what is good or not. And if you're, this makes you uncomfortable, then maybe Netflix isn't the place for you. Wow. Netflix. Said that to their employees. They did. Wow. Interesting. They Any did. shift in leadership? Because they were the ones that kind of, uh, they were they were starting to flex the whole Dave Chappelle thing, right? Well, they, they stood their ground with Chappelle, yeah. but you're right. There was some pressure. Yeah. But I think this is because they, they're getting hit. And they're, yep. they're getting hit in the market. And I think they're like, okay, everybody, like we can't, we got to like, just let our, our, our customers yeah, I saw decide. that. I wasn't aware of like some of the flicks I think that people thought were super woke or whatever. Like, cause I know that, that a lot of their subscriptions dropped, uh, pretty substantially just like Disney, right? Yep. Well, no, Disney's on the rise, bro. Oh, they're on the rise oh, now? Oh, really? Yeah, Disney just broke another record this last quarter. No way. Look oh, up, look up uh, Disney, Disney on the rise subscribers. Disney, Hulu, Disney, Hulu, ESPN, which are all underneath the Disney umbrella, are mm. all all cr Yeah, they they hope to surpass. So they're at like one. I want to say 150, and uh, Netflix is at 222, mm. somewhere on there. So they're gaining. They're gaining on on Netflix, and the, obviously Netflix charges a higher uh, a higher premium than mm -hmm. Disney does. And but Disney's waiting. They're waiting to build their content and their library up. And then they'll get to a place where they'll they'll start to charge a little bit mm -hmm. more. What's it at? Walt Disney Company reported that uh, 137 million subscribers worldwide. Second quarter. <coughs> this is uh, this marks a growth in service subscribers base oh, more good. than 100 million since mm -hmm. the start of fiscal year 2020. Okay. Yeah, so they're 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 growing, man. Hey, well, so here's here's what the Netflix thing said. It says, as employees, we support the principle that Netflix offers a diversity of stories, even if we find some titles counter to our own personal values. Depending on your role, you may need to work on titles you perceive to be harmful. If you find it hard to support our content breadth, Netflix may not be the best place for you. So in other oh. words, do your job. Yeah. Or leave. Let's stick to just working yeah. and, and leave the politics out. Speaking of work, uh, did you guys see what BCI NCI is putting out for coaches and trainers? I think this is absolutely brilliant. Free the free business coaching assessment, right? Free business coaching uh, assessment. So if you're brilliant. if you're a coach or a trainer, you can go to uh, NCI, um, and I think what's the website? It's uh, ncivip.com. Yeah, that's what it is. NCIVIP.com. You go there and they will literally analyze your business, break it down, and show you how you can uh, how you can stand out from your your competitors, how you can get clients that are more suited for what you like to do, who will also pay more, so your value goes up, uh, increase member retention, how to scale your business. So yeah. a lot of a lot of coaches run into a problem when they build their coaching business, they reach a limit by their time. They're like, how do I grow this? Because uh, now I'm stuck with the amount of hours I work or whatever. Well, just getting like another set of eyes on your business, so valuable, mm -hmm. like to see things. Cause you just get in that day to day process of like trying to like manage your own 
way of doing things in your systems and whatnot, but like to get somebody else to come in and, and tell you like where you could maybe improve or what they see is like so valuable. No, Doug, the, the way it works is that you go to that website, you fill out basically like an assessment form. So a bunch of questions related probably Correct. to your business. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then they actually call you. Is that right? Yeah. You set an appointment, they call you and they do the uh, analysis. Yeah. Yeah, super wow. Cool. That's, that's, that's a, it's all free. Yeah. Free for my listeners. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our partners, Ned. They have a de-stress blend that uses cannabinoids from hemp plants and other botanicals to help you with anxiety and stress. Uh, this really works well. You take it about 30 to 60 minutes later, you can feel your body physically relax. Go check them out. Go to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Ned. Use the code mindpump for 15% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Joshua from Colorado. Joshua, what's happening, man? How can we help you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm from I'm from New York. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I know. So I'm a, I'm a novice trainer, uh, personal trainer. I've been a trainer for about three to four months, and uh, I'm looking to be able to recomp my body uh, for you know for myself, uh, for my client as well. Because you know, there's a certain I, want, I need to look the, the part, right? If I'm a trainer. And I'm also doing it for my health, right? For my overall health, uh, because I, I've gotten a couple of blood tests done over the course of eight months. And on my first uh, blood test, I realized that uh, I was pre-diabetic and I had a slew of other problems. So coming from being 265 pounds since the end of 2020, uh, right now I've dropped down to 227. And um, I'm looking to be able to be at a healthy 180 190 pounds or so, right? Because I've never been there before. Now, what what drives me to to ask is I've been really conflicted because something that Adam likes to bring up, and uh, also you guys agree as well. And it's basically don't kill yourself doing cardio, right? And um, you know, I I can understand that past a certain point, but I've always thought that incorporating about 120 to 100 and what, 50 minutes of cardio, steady state cardio a week was a good thing for weight loss. But, you know, now you guys are, are basically saying, no, you should send the proper signal to your muscles to eat more, to build more and to have your metabolism higher because that's what matters even more. Uh, so, you know, I'm still not entirely versed in my, and in, 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 I'm not entirely knowledgeable with, uh, with metabolism and whatnot like that. So I'm educating myself even with the free things that you have online as well. Uh, but that, that that leads me to ask, well, what's the point of doing cardio at all, right? Especially when it comes to losing weight, uh, either for myself or for my clients. And is there even a role in cardio when it comes to uh, bustle building programs or anything like that? Yeah, there's there's two things here. Yeah, we wanna, address a couple of things. Here. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify here. So uh, 120 minutes, 150 minutes of cardio a week is good for your health. It's good for your health. Here's the problem. When people rely on cardio for weight loss, that's when you run into issues. It's much easier to either cut your calories if that's what you want to do and you want to get there quick. But I recommend, and we recommend, to get your metabolism to move in a positive direction. In this case, it would be faster because build. that's what's going to stick with you all day, every single day. So really what you want to do is you're fine doing 120 minutes of cardio every week so long as it's not the main signal you're sending your body, so long as that's not your number one way of losing body fat. Your strength training should be the foundation of your of your uh, routine because that's what's going to stop or slow down or reverse the metabolism slowdown that comes from cutting your calories. So that's all it is. Also keep in mind, 120 minutes of cardio, you guys, in a week's time, you're talking about maybe 400 to 500 calories. It's not, not hey, much. You're talking about, okay, you could also shave, okay, Joshua, 80 calories a day. Yeah. You could shave 80 calories a day in your food. And so I would always rather go that direction first before I start adding cardio into my clients. Just lives. from a fat loss perspective. Yeah, from a fat loss perspective. We're not talking about health right now. We're talking about somebody who has a strategy of trying to get down mm -hmm. to a weight they either never been down to or a weight they would really like to get down to. And I, I use cardio every show, but that's, it's the very last week. I mean, it's talk. I wait until I'm down to 6% body fat, and it's what gets me down to 3% body fat. So it's not that a cardio is a, a terrible strategy. It's just used terribly by most people. Doing cardio when you're 40, 50 pounds out from where you want to be, terrible strategy. I would much rather build your metabolism, build muscle, add calories to your diet, 
get to a place where we can speed the metabolism up, then reverse, go back the other way by slowly taking calories away from you, manipulating your training. So we're sending a new signal. So hopefully the body is trying to adapt. We're burning more calories. You're slowly losing weight. And then as we get closer to your goal, we can start to add cardio in the routine. The reason why I don't like to do it right from the get-go is because you will have eventually your body will get adapted to that 120 minutes and that 120 quickly becomes 240 then that 240 becomes 480 then the next thing you're doing is an hour of cardio every single day and then maybe you get your goal but then guess what you have to do now Josh what to maintain that now you got to main now you got to do an hour of cardio every single day to maintain this physique that you worked your ass off over the last 6 months for and the reality is 99.9% .9 of the people don't they eventually go back to what they were doing before they decided this goal and they don't do the cardio every single day mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. So that is why you hear us talk about that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're somebody who loves to, to run and it's part of your life, like you get up every day and you love to go for a nice jog for 30 minutes, and I would never tell that client to stop doing that. I would love for that client to, if that's something they've been doing and it's part of their lifestyle, there's, there's lots of health benefits to being somebody who gets out there and runs for 30 minutes every single day. But for somebody who has a specific goal, like I want to lose body fat, Adam, what is the best strategy to do it? I'm currently not doing any cardio right now. Cardio is not what I'm recommending right now. It's the last thing that I'm going to recommend to you. I'm going to tweak everything else nutritionally and program first before we even think about introducing mm -hmm. cardio. It's going to be a long ways from where you're currently at right now. And then maybe at the end, when we get really close to get you over that edge. But what I want to, what I want to be clear about is whatever you add into your routine to get you to that goal, if you want to keep that goal, you're going to have to maintain that. So the idea is that we we are trying to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change so you can maintain you know, for the rest of your life. Let me actually correct what you just said. That is not true for strength training. For strength training, what oh, yeah. gets you there yeah. to maintain that is much less. With cardio, it's not the same. Yeah, I meant with cardio. Yes. Whatever you do with cardio to get somewhere, you got to do the same. You got to keep doing that to maintain. When it comes to strength training, you do one-fifth, one-seventh the volume maintains what it took you to get there in the first place. So- all we're doing, Joshua, is communicating the most effective, efficient way to get where you want to go. But also understand that there's in, there's health benefits that come from cardio that are independent of weight loss. So you could do 120 minutes a week of mm -hmm. cardio, get no fat loss from it, still have health benefits. So there's nothing wrong with doing it. You get health benefits. People enjoy it. I mean, there's different factors to why people like, I think you can fit cardio in your programming, but uh, in terms of like the overall, the general purposes of people trying to lose body fat, it's just not as great of a strategy. Your real value is introducing people to this, uh, you know, counterintuitive idea uh, that you need to build your body up and you're going to create a body that's going to work for itself. It's going to create this auto automatic uh, response to, to burn calories, to, to, to shave off of that, you know, body fat if you if you build it right. Plus it has more longevity uh, to, to, to this whole, um, you know, fitness experience. So in terms of being a trainer and providing value, you, there's way more value in introducing people to this uh, method versus just, you know, throwing them on a treadmill and watching them do their routine. Yeah. Joshua, you've been a trainer. You've only been a trainer for a few months, right? Correct. Yes. How long have you been listening to our show? Uh, it's been about almost six months. Okay. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out because I want you to be a good trainer. So one, Thank you. one, keep listening to our show. Um, so just keep yes. doing that Two, I'm going to send you the program that I think coaches and trainers get the most value from something that you can apply to every single client. I'm going to send you maps prime maps prime by every client you work with, they will benefit from the stuff that you'll learn from maps prime. So I'm going to send that to you just cause you're a trainer and I'm partial to trainers. I, I want them to do well. Okay. I actually ended up uh, getting Prime, Prime Pro, and Prime Anywhere on um, May May first. Oh, good deal! Right? Like, all right, yeah, I'll... it's 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 really really resourceful. But it did bring me to ask uh, another question: Is okay. well, like, what would you recommend me trying to get uh, the RGB bundle? I want to be able to to build better muscle. I want to change and tweak my my physique a lot more than what it is. But I don't really know which way to go about it. And I know you guys talk a lot about anabolic. And doing anabolic performance, and then I don't remember the last one. Joshua, <laughs> but you, to do that, Joshua, yeah. are you trying to get free RGB bundle? Is that what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm being, and I'm it's being awesome. joined. You guys always talk about that, and when I looked online, that's what you guys have. It is. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, go anabolic. Yeah, go so anabolic. anabolic. At least, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you, you, yeah. you know, I'm going to send you all three. You got to be honest though. You trying to get it for free? Don't lie to me. 
<laughs> no, I'm serious. No, no. I, I, was, I was doing my research, right? I mean, I've been watching you guys for some time. And right. I mean, granted, I was watching from a line of skepticism, but I really like what you guys talk about. Thank you. It, well, we'll it make clicks, you a true believer if you yeah. go through. Yeah, you're, you're, listen, you're only six months deep in, brother. You yeah. got you got There's a lot. There's a listen, lot more to listen. Listen, to. I'm going to send you all three, but I want you to promise me that you are going to do your best and you're going to stick to being a trainer for at least a year because the first year is the hardest. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Because we need good trainers. So I'm going to send you the RGB bundle. Stick to it for at least a year before you decide whether or not this is for you. It's it, it's a tough job. It's hard, but you get past that first year, it starts to get a lot better, okay? I'm trying. trying All right, man. Sure. All right, thanks, brother. Thanks for calling in. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Boy, I'm like a- Gotta love those skeptics. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm so easy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah so I was looking at the RGB bundle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll send that over yeah. to you. You know, it's it's this this whole debate around cardio. Look, I'm going to say it straight up. When it comes to just fat loss, and you have your you have cutting calories, strength training, and cardio. At the bottom is cardio. Cardio is not an effective long term fat loss approach. It is not short term. You'll get some results. Long term, it's terrible. We've talked about this many times. But there's health benefits from it. So we're not anti cardio. No, we're anti using it for the wrong reasons. And that's the, all. the people it stirs up the most is the the guy or the girl who gets up every day and they run for a half hour every hour to start their day, and they've been doing it for five to ten years. I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I'm not talking to you. Keep doing that. If you love to run and it's an this beautiful escape for you, or yeah. like somewhat of a meditation, like I am all for that. That's awesome. I am talking to someone just like this. I'm I, I'm used to being 260 pounds. I, I worked my ass off to get down to 227, and now I'm trying to go from 227 down to 180, which is 40 40 pounds still. Yeah. I want to lose 40 pounds, mm -hmm. and I'm wanting to get on the trying on the treadmill right now. Yeah. Terrible fucking idea, yeah. especially if you're not already someone who loves doing that. Yeah. If he came in, he says, "You guys, I've been running my whole life yeah, every I just day. Love it. I love it. Yeah. I wouldn't say stop it." But you, his goal is, I want to lose body fat. I want to get down to a certain weight. And it's a significant amount. It's not five pounds. Yeah. It's 40 pounds. And if you want to lose 40 pounds, you don't you don't love doing cardio. You weren't doing it anyways. Starting right now, doing that is a terrible fucking strategy. It's unsustainable even yes. once you get there. And I'll argue with anybody on that all day yeah. long. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Our next caller is Laura from Florida. Hi, Laura. How can we help you? Hi. Um, I had a question about prepping for my first bikini competition and really knowing like is my bodybuilding coach a good one or a bad one i guess um <laughs> Ooh, <here we> go. <laughs> my uh, my boyfriend is a personal trainer he actually used to be my personal trainer and then um i got a bodybuilding coach when i decided that i wanted to start competing and he has a lot of conflicting ideas on if her programming is the best for my body, if it will hurt my meta my metabolism in the long run. And he's really concerned with like the food group she's cutting out. She doesn't want me having any dairy or any gluten. And um, the cardio is fairly high. I mean, I don't know what's high for bodybuilding. It's my first competition. Um, I'm not a trainer. And so I listen to the podcast and I listen to my boyfriend and that's really all I know. Um, so, from my question, my cardio has been updated since then, I believe, but I do sprints twice a week with 20 minutes steady state cardio afterwards. And then three times a week, I have 30 minutes of steady state cardio and I'm training six days a week now with um, really far, high volume. How far out are you? I'll be 12 weeks on Wednesday. And you're okay. already doing that. Wow. What, what, what so are your does, does the coach or your boyfriend listen to Mind Pump? I don't believe so. No, I've tried to get my boyfriend to listen, but um, he's just not a podcast guy what, in what general. Are, what are your What are your calories at? Right now, I can pull it up right now. Cool. Um, also, she, do you have intolerances to dairy and gluten, or was that just a suggestion? It was um, a suggestion. I don't have any intolerances to any food, actually. Um, okay. When I started listening to you guys and actually eating and training well, any intolerance that any tolerances like i thought i had totally went away which was okay. great it's a, it's um, a bodybuilding coach myth yeah i know yeah. <laughs> so yeah tell me tell me your calories and then i'd yeah. like to know what your boyfriend is opposed to that your coach is having you do well he says she said cutting out the food groups the, the cutting out yeah the food is there more is there is he is he opposed to the training as well 
Um, he thinks that my cardio should be less and really be ramped up closer to the competition. Yeah, he sounds like he's uh, smarter than on, the coach. Hold on, Laura. I want to hear your calories first, and <laughs> yeah. then and then I'll give you my... Yeah, your cal- here, I'll just give you a heads up. Your calories better be over 2,500. Are they over 2,500? <laughs> Because if they're not, no, over- not at all. Okay, yeah, right. I'm going to tell you something. Way too high. Listen, too I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something that is every wo- every woman's worst nightmare. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Your yeah. Bo- your boyfriend's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you, yeah, he's he's your actually right. Boyfriend. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> your, yeah. yeah your, your calories are maybe too- he maybe he listens to mind pump. He just doesn't admit it. Yeah. Maybe that's what well, he will now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Hey, these I'm guys come said, home and I'm yeah. get lectured. These guys <laughs> said that you were right. Like, Let me listen to that show. No, um, what where, where, where are the calories though? I know we said they weren't over twenty five, but where are they? So I can. They're at sixteen hundred right now. Yeah, you're yeah. twelve weeks out, sixteen hundred calories. <laughs> already doing day. cardio every day. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. Oh, so here's here's this is just the the mo with a lot of these coaches. <laughs> Is they take somebody who's got who's built some muscle. You probably already built some muscle. You've probably done a good job mm-hmm. on your own, and then yeah. they're like, "Oh, cool! Twelve weeks out. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make you just move like crazy. I'm gonna cut the hell yeah. out of your calories. Cut That's calories, literally run a lot. There's no like science, no real strategy. It's just I'm gonna starve <laughs> you and I'm gonna beat you up. And then people okay. are like, "Why is my my hormones and metabolism so messed up? Why do I feel like crap? What what's going on with my body?" So. You're, you're, like I said, you're, you're, your calories you, are too I'll low. I'll tell you right where you're work. heading. You're heading right around week eight. Your coach is going to be looking at you because you're you've stalled, and then the next okay. thing is, the, and they're gonna they're gonna cut your calories even more and or uh, increase cardio even more. That's what's heading. That's what's coming for you in the in the next okay. four weeks. You are going to which by week eight or sooner they'll bring her down to twelve hundred probably yeah, double cardio. You're gonna you're they're gonna cut your calories more and increase. It's mm-hmm. just a terrible yeah. terrible direction. Can I ask you why you want to do a, a bikini competition? Like what what is your motivation around that? Um, I've never really wanted to do bikini. I really want to compete in figure because my upper body just builds like crazy, and I like how it looks. I enjoy lifting really heavy weights and having a strong back and shoulders. Um. But I've always enjoyed bodybuilding and really respected like the mental discipline that goes into it. And I come a very from a very traditional family where, you know, women are always small and petite. And it's always like women are small and men are big. Mm -hmm. And that always frustrated me, like growing up, always having comments about my weight thrown around. And I was like, you know, I just want to be strong and healthy. So that's what I'm going to do. And I love bodybuilding and I want to. I want to get on stage. I want to experience that discipline because okay. I am very disciplined and I'm extremely competitive. Well, good, good, but bad. So your yeah. attitude is what's going to make this very damaging for you. So be very careful. You are disciplined. You probably can tough your way out and mm-hmm. just eat nothing and just work out all the time because you're so disciplined. Don't do that. Okay. Don't okay. do that because it's not worth it. So let's get you in the forum. Yeah. I'll, I have, I have several clients that I've coached oh, there for, you go. for bikini shows that are actually yeah. in there. So, and you have other competitors that have coached themselves. So we're going to put you in our mm-hmm. private forum so you can, uh, I, I I'm willing to bet with your experience and with your boyfriend com- combined, the two of you, mm-hmm. I think you guys could probably put together a good run at a show. Yeah. And it's a bikini, Yeah, you know, yeah. Not, not saying it's easy, yeah. but of all the competitive, um, Competi- you know, all the competitions on stage, it's mm-hmm. bikinis a lot easier than well. The, the fact is, the 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 main work that's going to make you win or lose the show is it, as far as the way you've sculpted your physique. That's done here. The, this is okay. your this week now is revealing the work that you've done the previous six months, year, two years, three years. So mm-hmm. right now we're at the revealing phase. Now where this bikini this bikini coach is so off is that she's gonna you're gonna end up losing so much of that hard work that you did. You did all this great work to build a good a good base of mm-hmm. muscle, and by cutting your calories that low and doing cardio, it, it's inevitable you're gonna lose muscle. That your your mm-hmm. muscle is gonna get paired. You're sending a signal to get your body adapted to 1,600 calories or less while also running on a treadmill. Twelve or, weeks out. Yeah, twelve weeks mm-hmm. out. Like so. You're, yeah, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose weight. You're gonna lose some body fat, but along the way, you're gonna lose a lot of that muscle you worked your ass off to build, and that yeah. is not what we want to do right now. We want to we want to ease your way into this show, and yeah. uh, where you're at right now, I wouldn't even want to be there till like the final weeks. Like in, in a in a good setting, oh, wow. yeah, the very bottom of our our cut is around sixteen hundred calories, and we're okay. doing that kind of cardio, and yeah. it, that's very very possible. When you when you set yourself upright in the off season and then you do a proper cut going in there and so get in the forum we're going to give you free access to that 
Um, Thank you. Yeah, we're all there, so you can tag us if you have questions. Introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know what you're kind of what you're going through, what you're doing, and you'll start to see uh, several other bikini competitors pop up and start shit because they've all, they've got all very similar stories. Everyone's a lot of people in there have been through something very similar. As you Laura, what, do you know what body fat percentage you're at now? I do not. I was going to do that test um, next week. I, I okay. go to um, a gym locally that my boyfriend manages, and he was going to scan me next week to see where I was at. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because I mean you you. you Bikini, you're probably what trying to hit 12, 13 percent at the leanest, Adam. Yeah, yeah, but that's very vague because I depends tell you on all how time, they look. Yeah, the, the, it has everything to do with how you look. So I would never go off yeah. of just pure body fat percentage. Although that would give us an idea, yeah, of where you're at. And I do think that's a very mm -hmm. smart strategy because even even with all of my experience coaching bikini athletes and getting ready for a show, I always do that at the beginning so I know. You know, maybe I cut too much or maybe I'm not cutting enough and having a, a body fat percentage to refer back to. That's really what I care more about than the end. Like, oh, you should be down to 9% or 12% because I've told you guys before, Katrina walks around all the time at 12 and that would be considered super low for most people. So, mm. you know, it really depends on how, how your body holds body fat. And it's all, it's a subjective That's sport. True. It's all how she well, looks. Laura, I'm happy you yeah. called 12 weeks out Thanks. and I, I'm glad we weren't talking to you four weeks out, you know, cause uh, a lot of damage could have been done in that period. So, of time, so. I guess just to get in your response, cause I, I, th I kind of knew what you guys were going to say and I was, pretty sure my boyfriend is right because he's been training for over five years at this point. Um, so he definitely knows his stuff, but what should I do? I guess at this point, so you're like still, so going forward, should I go forward with the show? Do you think I should pull out and get, find get, another get in the coach? form, get in the form and let me, I want to see okay. what you, I want to see what you look like or give me your handle so I can kind of look at what you look like. Cause uh, honestly, we're, we're, this is, this is a subjective sport, right? So I have to see where okay. you're at. If I think you're yeah. already pretty lean, we might, we might even have time to reverse uh, for mm -hmm. a couple weeks and then go back to a more sustainable mm, that's great. type of cut. Cause you're, you're okay. you might be, but if you still have a long ways to go body fat percentage, it may be a good idea to scratch this show, go back to like reversing out, getting your calories up. Like you know, how, how much do you weigh right now? Right now I'm at, um, between 126 and 128. Okay. Yeah. We, we yeah. could, we could literally, we could literally get you up over 2,500 or 2,600 calories kind of maintaining. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's a very real for your, for your size. It's not unrealistic to be able to get up to that. So, and, okay. I, and, and that, so for me, so when I co when I coached all bikini athletes, this was a rule of mine. Like we did not schedule a show until mm -hmm. I thought their, their metabolism was ready for a show. And so okay. that was the deal. Like they would, they would all call me the same way. They'd be like, Adam, I, me and my girlfriend, we want to do a show in November. Will you coach us? I said, that's not how I do it. I, mm -hmm. You can hire me, but then what we're going to do is we're going to work as if we're in an off season right now. I want to I want to see where your metabolism's at. I want to see how your body's responding to the weights. I want to see how you're training, what your symmetry looks like, all those things. I want to I want to assess all that, and then I want to get you to a place where I feel like you are eating a good enough calories that when we decide to go in our eight to twelve week cut, that when you end and it's showtime, you're still in a healthy place. Mm. You still okay. are in a place where you're not losing your period. You're eating a good amount of calories that you're mm -hmm. not starving the body. We're not on the treadmill every single day for an hour, something like that. Even the, even that amount of cardio, like even if I had to do that, it doesn't happen until the last couple of weeks at most. I definitely am not yeah. doing that this far out. And if I, if I, if I feel if I, as a coach, I thought I needed to do that 12 weeks out, then I don't think you're ready for the show because I didn't do okay. my job of building your metabolism up. So let's, let's see where you're at, get in the forum, either take pictures and, and throw them up there for me or give me your handle so I can take a look at where you're at. And then mm -hmm. from there, we should decide whether we scratch this show, focus on building some more and then go back. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks right, for calling Lauren. in. All right. Thanks. You know, this is one of those rare really rare situations where the boyfriend was right. So I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad we could give him a win. <laughs> no, all joking aside. Maybe he was right a lot. You know, yeah. just didn't get acknowledged. No, all, so here jo you go. all joking aside, um, I, nine out of 10 times when somebody calls in and they have a bodybuilding or like show coach, the advice is terrible. Nine, so far, nine. Out, I, I mean, I can't actually be honest. Yeah. It might actually be ten out of ten. I can't. Well, yeah, it's ten, it's ten out of ten. But you got there's a little bit of a bias there, right? They're calling in because because they, they, they are they, they, they kind yeah, of there's something off. Yeah, yeah, they kind of are. Well, in your want, experience, to confirm it. When your experience, Adam, of all the coaches you knew when you were doing this, was it, what was it? What would you say? Like eighty percent or just? Oh yeah, at least that. It's. Wow. It, I mean, 
I built a business that I didn't intend to build off of that. That was not, I did not go like, I want to be a bikini. You just saw there was a need. Yeah. I saw there was a need. I, I, I started talking to all these competitors that I saw at the shows and I started hearing what the, and my first experience, by the way, even before I got into shows, I dated a girl that competed. So well, well before I competed, my girlfriend competed and I knew nothing about show prep or any of that stuff. And I, so I was like this boyfriend right here. And it's actually funny because it was about five to seven years into my career. I'm dating this girl who decides that she wants to do bikini and he's running her on like 1300 calories. And I remember telling her like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think you should. And he's, she's like, no, he's telling me I have to do this in order. And here's the thing that you got to watch out for. And like, she was, she was extremely disciplined. She did it and she placed, she did well. But boy, was she have a hard time maintaining that. I mean, and it when, just didn't confirm. And because she played, she's like, well, I guess it was right. That's right. So that's what I meant by, by be careful because I know there's people that are listening that may have done a show and been able to have yeah. a, a coach, coach put them through this crazy ass diet and routine and they made it. Like, it doesn't mean, like, it doesn't mean everybody gets fucked up the first time they do this. Right, just because uh, coaches do this stupid shit, our bodies are resilient as hell. Yeah, and if you're, if that's you're, when they do three, four, five. That's right. And if you're a pretty healthy person, you you can get away with twelve weeks of fucking death, you know, yeah. and actually come out the end and maybe even place and actually been okay. But then you start to think that that's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, and that's where the real danger comes in. Is that like, because like I said, if you if you have a really really healthy metabolism and you're and you're a healthy person in general. And you do some of these extreme things for a short period of time. A lot of people will be okay. They'll come out of it and not be all. The damage we see that's common is because it's been show after show after show, and and so that's the trap. So if you're listening right now, and and you hear where this girl is at right now, and this she, and I'm glad you brought that up that she you know you talked about her, you know she's got the discipline probably to stick it out, and she probably would stick it out mm -hmm. and probably get to stage and see probably one of the best bodies she's ever built on of, of herself or whatever, but the danger is now she thinks that's how you do that, and then and, and there's and, a better and, way. And by the way, every show gets harder. I don't care who, how good you the do. The body it. gets more, it adapts. It yes. slows down the metabolism. And it, so it, you just keep having to ramp that extreme up and it attracts the people that have these these radical disciplines to just, I can do this. Yeah. And they normally have some crazy thing underneath that's driving them. My parents used to tell me I can't or I shouldn't or whatever like that. <laughs> or I was this or I was that. Oh, yeah, the massive chip on the shoulder. That's right. Dude, I totally and and that. and it's like they've they've got that and they're they're battling that every day. Yep. And they've and they're and they're badass. They've got the discipline to do it, but they have no idea what they're doing and they're setting themselves up for long term. Our next caller is Allison from Colorado. Allison, how's it going? How can we help you? Doing well. Um how are you guys today? Excellent. We're doing pretty good. Thank Justin just really <laughs> feels, he feels very <laughs> relieved <laughs> right now. It's, yeah. Thanks for asking. All right. Um, so, guys, I first have to tell you that um, I am so grateful to have found you guys. Thank you. Um, and you'll understand uh, why when I give you a little bit of background. Um, I have a few questions, but definitely have to fill in some pieces beforehand. Um, so the very first time I heard your podcast was, I want to say a month and a half ago when the, the first podcast where you introduced map symmetry and it's what I've, it's the missing piece to my puzzle that I've been waiting for for so long. And it just, it fills me with so much gratitude and joy because it's been a struggle bus for a while. Um, I, I was always an athlete growing up, soccer, volleyball. Um, so I wrote a book and I'm basically going to summarize my book to give you guys the foundation to help answer my questions. And my book talks about like drugs, alcohol, addiction. Um, I stopped being an athlete. And when I started being an athlete in my early, um, so when I, continued to be an athlete again it was in my late teens and early 20s and I became a runner and I lost weight and I stopped drinking drugs doing all that and I got into running and it was very healthy when I first started and it was fine and it was great and then I live out here in Colorado started mountain climbing got into that and it was all it was really it was in a healthy place and then 
I have this addictive personality and started really getting into my mountain climbing and my ultra running. And I eventually have a mountain climbing accident where I fall um, 10 years ago and I break my femur and it, the accident should have, I should have died. I shouldn't have made it through it, but I, I did. And that was super awesome. And I break my femur, I get physical therapy. I get a titanium plate with a bunch of screws in my leg and five months after breaking my femur, I I'm running a 50 miler six months after breaking my femur. I'm, I'm running my first hundred mile race and I do PT enough to get to where I'm doing what I love. And so for the past decade, I've, things were fine. Um, I, I've ran 2,100 mile races and I, I, I was pretty good. I've, I've been pretty good. I'm, I'm winning a bunch of these. I set a lot of mountain climbing records in Colorado and have climbed thousands of mountains. And, um, but I've, I, tuned out from my body and I didn't really know what good or bad pain was anymore, especially after having such a hardcore accident. So I didn't understand. I just thought like how my left hip was like, didn't work the same anymore. I just thought that was kind of what my life trajectory trajectory was going to be because of my accident. And I never continued getting physical therapy or doing any of that. And then about it started about two years ago and things just started falling apart. Um, started with plantar fasciitis and then it went into back spasms and leg spasms and going to this physical therapist, that physical therapist, doing more modalities, acupuncture, ralphing, gua sha, um, it just cry, cry, cryo spa. I've done PRP and so many things and MRIs and nothing like when I broke my femur, I broke my femur. I knew how to rehab, um, from it, but this, I didn't know what was wrong or how to fix it. And I can honestly say the two past two years have been such a struggle bus, but I wouldn't change them for anything because it's led me to be one of the best people, not just athletes that I've ever been in my life and how to be mindful about things. And I finally found the right PT um, and we've been doing just great stuff and building my body back. And basically my body fell apart because for 10 years I was imbalanced and I was compensating and my right leg's done all this work and it's worked for a long time until it didn't work anymore. And my body just was like, I'm done. I need you to get me rebalanced. But I, I totally didn't understand this. And I've had so many strength coaches that just didn't put the right programming together or had no idea. And then you guys do, I hear the, like, I'm finally at this place where I got back to running. I had to take a year off from all the crazy stuff. And then once I got back, it's way more mindful and I'm doing so much less running and I'm doing way more mobility and more strength. And I'm setting PRs in the hundred and the 50 K in the 50 miler. And I'm running way less. And it's been, it's been incredible, but I still have some stuff and I'm just, I've been at this plateau and then I hear your podcast map symmetry and I'm, I, I am on phase two, week two. And it's like, it, I just, it brings me so much joy doing it because it's, there's no better programming for, I mean, there's so many people out there that I'm sure have had um, injuries and broken things and are, can relate to exactly what I'm saying. And so I feel so blessed. Um, and that's kind of the background where I'm at with, yeah, where I am. And I want to ask you guys, um, a few questions. The first one being, um, as an ultra endurance athlete and kind of my story, you just heard what kind of recommendations for programs to use after symmetry and during my buildups for like a hundred mile race, would you do, would you have me do, um, after I complete symmetry for the first time, or would you have me do symmetry, like do it again? Run it again. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to give you two, I'm going to give you two answers, Allison. Uh, so, so and either one's okay. One's better than the other. Okay. So you, before you started your endurance sports, you had some addiction issues with alcohol and drugs, correct? 
Totally. Okay. Have you ever heard somebody say that they, have you ever heard the saying that you can turn anything into a drug? Yeah. Yeah. So your endurance sports is your drug. So absolutely. So one answer I'm going to give you is to not do those sports for a long time. You're going to have to go. It's like an alcoholic saying, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to drink a couple beers every night instead of coming off completely and working through that. So that's one advice, one piece, one answer. Now that might not be the answer you want to hear. It might not be possible for you. So here's the second answer. I think you should run map symmetry over and over and over again for at least a couple years because you're you're looking at 10 years of yeah. this intense type of training. You've created some serious imbalances. It's going to take a year or two to undo some of that work. And what you're seeing now is just the beginning. I mean, you just started map symmetry. You're noticing a difference. You're feeling it now. Just wait to a year or two from now. So my second piece of advice is this. Do map symmetry over and over again for a year and then go back to your endurance sport. Now, now the first answer, the first one is I wouldn't go back to endurance sports for longer. I would wait much longer until you feel like you're free from that addiction because I've seen lots of, look, I, I, I dealt with this myself. I still deal with it when it comes to exercise. It's like any drug. It's, it's very hard to, it's very hard to have a little bit, right? It's, it, 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 yeah. it very slowly creeps up and turns back into a problem. So you're going to have to break that for a while. But otherwise, I would go a year. I would go a year, map symmetry. When you're done with it, start over again. When you're done with it, start over. I think you can run map symmetry maybe three times in a year and then go back to doing some endurance sports and ease your way in and try to stay aware of your tendency to overdo it. Really try and stay aware of that because that'll creep up on you and then you'll run into similar problems that you're, you're dealing with now. The yeah, only thing I would add to that, um, Allison, I, I know you haven't been listening very long. So we have a webinar that I did for free. It's called uh, Maps Prime Pro or Prime Pro. Prime, Prime Pro, Pro webinar. Prime Pro. I don't even know my own webinar. PrimeProWebinar.com. It's free. And it's like a 50-minute class that I take you through uh, from like literally from head to toe. And it's uh, all of our mobility work, and it's specifically movements that are from our Prime Pro program. Uh, it, go go through that. I think that would be great for you. I think that would be something that you should try and incorporate at least once or twice uh, a week into your routine. I think that'll help oh. out. Uh, I think that'll help a lot uh, with your pain and trying to balance your body out. And then I agree with Sal. I think symmetry is the place to stay for probably a while or maybe even indefinitely, at least until you decide to start to s slowly reduce the, at one point in your life, I mean, if, if you don't know this already, you're going to have to cut back on ultra marathon running. I mean, at one point in your life, your, your body is eventually going to tell you, um, this is not the healthiest thing that we can be doing for it. And it's probably already starting to tell you that. And I think you know yeah. that. And, and don't, don't confuse ultra marathons with running. You can run right. and stay healthy for the rest of your life. An ultra marathon is like it's like competing in powerlifting, or or competing right. in bodybuilding. It's just an extreme yeah. athletic endeavor, and it's just there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not ideal. It's not a healthy ideal long term. That's all. That's and that's what I meant by yeah. that, right? So I, I I absolutely think that it, you if you have a love for for running, you can keep that passion and you can do it in a very healthy way. I think ultra marathon running is the extreme version of that, which it's it's a sport at that point, right? It's not something healthy for your body, and that and that goes for any sport. and And I know people that are athletes and they love their sport. They never like to hear me say that, but it's the truth. No, no sport where you do a repetitive movement for hours on hours on hours and years on years and years is is healthy and good for the body. It's just not. We weren't intended to to move like that. So. We were though intended to go for for long treks, so you know, walking and hiking and and being outdoorsy and doing those things. I think that's an awesome endeavor for you to continue on. But if you know that you have these addictive behaviors, where a little turns into a little more, turns into a lot, turns into excessive, relatively quick, then you know, I think that the self awareness there is that um, I need to start working on that and peeling back. Map Symmetry is the program for you. And my recommendation would be to start working away from the ultra marathons and to a more balanced approach. Um, yeah, totally have done what you're saying. I took a year off, which I'd never done in my life. And the recommendations are, are totally on point. I mean, we're talking about doing 120 miles of running a week and now I do 50 
miles a week and the extra time that I used to run, I, I bike or I do yoga or now map symmetry and it's improved my running like profoundly. Yeah. You're still doing a lot. Yeah. 50 miles plus yoga plus map symmetry is still a lot. I know it's it's hard yeah. it's hard for you. It's to hear the right this. direction though. You're so, moving in the right I mean, direction. Right. That, that's you're trending correct. What kind and, of what and kind of getting, and your body is by the way it's it's telling you you're going the right direction. Yeah. Like imagine if you went a little bit further that direction. Yeah, you know. So yeah. it's it's telling totally. you right now you're you're starting to treat me a little bit better. You're starting to Keep head in the listening right to that. Your yeah. body is telling you a lot. Yeah. And so if you you know the benefits that you see from that now you can really maximize that. I think we're just trying to like read uh, sort sort of reprogram that in your mind to get in that direction. Yeah. Are you, what kind of yoga are you doing? A yoga app that I like to do after my runs, it's called like yoga on the go. And it's about 15 minutes of just, um, different programs that I do okay. post run. Check, check out that, really webinar. that webinar. That webinar yeah. could potentially replace that. That could replace stuff. And then have you ever done yin yoga? I have not. I like yin yoga for someone like you. It's very meditative. And then do you do any meditation? I, that's been the biggest game changer of my Wonderful. Whole self. Wonderful. Yeah, that 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 would really that meditation and yin yoga uh, would be something. I you're would, heading the I right direction, prescribe. Allison. Yeah. You know, I just want to just so you so we don't come off like we're beating you up for what you're doing. Mm. I think you're you're totally. You're, you're 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 heading the right direction, and, and I'm, I'm proud of where where you've already come. So you've already come a long ways, and and I think you you know what your body is telling you. It's responding to that, but I think you could keep. I think you can come further. So keep heading this way. Try out that webinar. Keep following uh, symmetry. And then stay in touch with us, huh? Yeah. Um, time for another question? Sure. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Um, can you guys um, tell me if you know anything about scar tissue and the most effective ways to break it up? Yeah. Um, so we're not, that's not, I wouldn't say that's not our expertise. However, breaking up scar tissue is largely a myth, it's a very tough, fibrous tissue. What people yeah. often confuse for scar tissue is just tight muscles. So muscles can can be tight. You can develop knots in muscles from the central nervous system telling certain areas or, or parts of the body to be tight. And pressing on those and working those out with pressure <coughs> does yeah. work. But actual real scar tissue, mm -hmm. the amount of pressure yeah. required to break up scar tissue would would damage your body. Is severely. it around is it around your knees, hips, or ankles? That's the thing, it's it's protecting you. Um, it's like a protective response. My so my scar tissue, I've, I get hardcore massage therapy in it and I've actually saw it, um, through ultrasound when I've gotten PRP, which is platelet rich plasma injections into it. And so it's imagine like a, this huge brick or stick of butter that's like right under my, it's where my hamstring is. And it's made the muscles in that leg really messed up. And for a while it was compressing on my SI joint and limiting a lot of the tendons and muscles that I could use. And so we've done some really good work with it, but we still can see it through ultrasound, just this massive lump of crap. And well, I'm not sure if I'm, if there's anything else I can do. For well, I mean, it. and I'm, I'm sure you don't want to hear us to continue to beat this drum, but <laughs> you got this probably from running these ultra marathons. And so you, right. you working on it with a therapist and then going right back out to 50 miles a week, you, it's you're it's to talk about an uphill battle. I mean, again, yeah. more signs your body is telling you that slow down and take care of me. But there's there's actual scar tissue and then there's tightness. So actual yeah. scar actual scar tissue, like breaking it up would be like you would have to. It, it would be the kind of pressure that could potentially break bones and damage the body. Yeah, from what okay. I understand. Yeah. So, but again, yeah. that's not my expertise. Right. So I, okay. you know, that but but that's from what I. Yeah, understand. the point to take away where where it came from and why it came here. Yes, and that continuing to do what you're doing, and and that's just, you have identified that in an area in your body. I'm assuming and the reason why I asked about the hips, knees, and ankles is those are the other areas where you know my runners have that have a lot of problem, and totally. it's like, and then they're always trying to ask me like you know all these like you know can I floss and what if I do this this grafting can I do that and they're they're looking for all these techniques to put band aids on it's like. Like, well, you know what would really fix it is us stopping running and focusing, right. yeah, focusing on mobility and strength training. Like that's what's. It's like fix you're banging it. your head against the wall and you're like, "What's the best helmet?" Yeah, you or, know, or medicine, like Advil. or medicine yeah. to take. Yeah. When it's like, stop banging your okay. head. Okay, you know. Okay, um, that makes sense. Last yeah. question. Okay. Um, there is an area that I have that's really been a, the most chronic irritation, um, and it's changing and it's getting better. And one of the best things but it's still there. And the dumpy squat 
dump i think i said that right you got it. has oh man that's just like that when i started doing that i was like this is what it's been waiting for i mean it's like the isometric hold with the deep rotators have been just it's been just huge but I don't have that with phase two or phase three. Like, is that something that I can do just every oh, yeah. day oh, in the morning? Oh, yeah. That's your primer um, right there. Yeah, 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 you oh, can, yeah. You can do oh, that yeah. every day. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, because it's not damaging. Okay. Yeah, and you, by the way, just activating that. That's this is something that you know when you when you listen to us long enough, you you will have heard us say this. Like when we write our programs, um, you know, we encourage. That's part of the, the the motivation behind when we originally started the podcast was to help people kind of modify it more specifically because nothing will ever surpass. You know, right. you, me coaching you one on one. Because if I'm coaching you one on one, we're having this dialogue every day, and I can modify yeah. and change. And you can give me feedback, like, "Oh my God, Adam, that dumpy squat when I do it just unlocks everything, and I feel so good." I, like even if I had potentially not planned to program that every week, it has now become a staple because of that feedback. So Perfect. we definitely awesome. encourage clients as they go through the programs and they start to learn about their body. Uh, that they they start to include those mm-hmm. things, and that's a, a classic example of where we would absolutely keep that as a primer yeah. for you every day. All right, Allison. Well, thanks for calling in. We appreciate you you listening to the show and calling in. She's frozen. Oh, okay. Oh, good time. Oh, that's okay. She's yeah. Done. Good deal. You know, I had a. Cl- I, I remember this maybe a year or two into my training career. At this point, I was a fitness manager, and I, but I did train a couple clients. And I remember I had this one client who was going to quit smoking. And she decided, I'm going to exercise every time I have a craving to smoke a cigarette. Well, anyway, it turned into an addiction with Mm -hmm. exercise. It became a problem. She started overtraining as a result. And that was the first time I realized, and I was a kid. I was only 18 when when, when I was first a trainer. Mm -hmm. I remember realizing she just moved from one addiction to another. And we had this conversation about it and then she did work on that. So, and that's what she's experiencing. Bro, this is, ex- this is super yeah, common. Very common. This is super common. A, a, a lot of people do exactly that. And why it's, it's tough to see is because it's, we connect it to health. Yeah. You know, exercise it's, it's be- and re- restricting of food. Yeah, and addicted to running is better than addicted to crack. That Yeah. yeah. I mean, and so it's, it's it's really hard for them to see that. It's really even hard for a professional to tell them, hey, you're doing a bad job yep. or you shouldn't be doing that. So this is really common, really, really common. That I mean, most people that, that have the discipline to kind of to go at, get after it for that, there, there's normally something else going on. Sure. And they, they almost have always traded some other addiction for that addiction. Totally. And, you know, and, and kudos for going that route instead of crack or something fucking terrible, right? That mm-hmm. could, could end up bleeding to death, but it still ends up beating up on the body. And, you know, everything that she's saying, like, right, there's this whole, that whole, that long old question and like all the things, it's all pointing to the same thing. It's like fucking stop running. Well, she's yeah. been scaling down, right? Which is great that you're yeah. able to identify that and start seeing benefits. We're just like, we're trying to nudge her further and further to keep going in that direction, yeah. not, you know, experience that for that moment and then go right yeah. back to the thing that brought you and, there. And it's, truth be told, you, we're doing this on a show. So yeah. we're being very, you know, blunt yeah. and a very, here's your you answer. Have so much time. But yeah. the, the truth is if, if I was training her, this for me, Oh, this is a daily yeah. conversation. And for it would a be year. slow. Exactly. Yeah. It, it would be slow. A slow because to tell Plant someone who's, a, who's addicted to exercise, stop doing it. You know, it's like, yeah. ain't going to happen. You know? Not only so, is it not going to happen, you can, you can even tell by the follow-up questions. Yeah. The follow-up questions are still the same answer. Yeah. This, the answer to this is still quit the fucking running or go the other direction. Mm-hmm. Keep going the other direction because all these other things, you're still looking at trying to put Band-Aids down so you can get out there and run. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yeah, this is not like, and and I hope Allison listens to this part and maybe it really resonates and maybe she really starts to head this direction. But when someone is still at this place where they, they think they know, like, oh, I know I need to do this, and but then they're still asking questions like that, like you... Because it's like yeah. the, just like you use the example of the alcoholic or the drug. It's obvious for everybody else. It's like, so it's not, hey, honest. I'm not going to drink, but it's cool. I'm going to go hang out at the yeah, bar yeah. with my friends every yeah. day, right? Like, that's yeah. not a big deal. I'm, I'm going to go do be that. a bartender. Or I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, they, they, they keep they, they keep flirting with what they know is probably It's hard not, to break that final line, yeah. that final, and it's a long process. Yeah, so that's and, as a, a, and you're right. As a, as a trainer. Oh, this would be a slow, I, I would identify it and be like, okay, this is what we're going to work on, and I'm going to take it slow yeah, yeah, and Little by little. Because otherwise I'll scare her and she'll run the opposite direction. Right. Right, right, little by little. Look, if you like our information, you will love mindpumpfree.com. We have all kinds of guides on there that can help you with almost any fitness goal, 
and they're free. They're totally free. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. <laughs>